so we have recently put up a video on the 13 dragons that are associated with the black faction in the Dance of the Dragons, which is currently being adapted into the TV series House of the Dragon. Here in this video, we will shift to the other side and showcase the 8 dragons that are and will be on the side of the green faction, listed in ascending order of size and strength. Also at the end of the video, we will talk a bit on the two dragons that were never claimed by either side. So let's get to it. At number 1 we have Shrykos. Shrykos was a young female dragon born to Prince Jaehaerys Targaryen, the son of King Aegon II and his sister wife Helena Targaryen. As a young dragon still growing and small in size, Shrykos was seen to have a great potential which is typical of dragons at this stage of their lives, but was never put to the test as she was too small to be ridden. Tragically, Shrykos will meet a violent end during the storming of the Dragon Pit, a brutal event where enraged citizens of King's Landing, spurred by religious fervor and fear, attacked the Dragon Pit to kill the dragons within. Shrykos was overwhelmed by sheer numbers and was killed in the chaos, but not without burning quite a lot of the common folk. But in the TV series, her fate might be changed, as this is an adaptation. Number 2. Morgul Morgul was another young dragon caught in the civil war of the Dance of the Dragons, born with Princess Jahera Targaryen. Like Shrykos, Morgul was housed in the Dragon Pit in King's Landing and faced the wrath of the mob during the storming of the Dragon Pit. The event marked a peak in anti-dragon sentiment among the common folk, who saw the dragons as symbols of Targaryen oppression and a threat to their safety. Both Shrykos and Morgul were of the same age and size, probably smaller than Aerax was at his time of death, and maybe a bit larger than Vermax when he was first seen as a baby dragon in the TV series. Number 3. Tessarion Also known as the Blue Queen due to her striking cobalt blue scales and flame, Tessarion was one of the more visually stunning dragons. She was ridden by Prince Daron Targaryen, a young but skilled and brave dragon rider. Tessarion played a significant role in several key battles of the Civil War, showcasing her ferocity and agility in combat. During the latter part of the dance, Daron rode Tessarion into the Battle of the Honeywine, in the reach to save Lord Ormond Hightower and his army. And after the loss of all the other dragons of the Greens and the loss of King's Landing to Rhaenyra, Sir Tyler Norcross believed that Tessarion, being of fighting size, was on her own enough to retake the Iron Throne. This tells us that the Blue Queen might have grown at a very fast rate and could have been as large as Sea Smoke. Number 4. Sunfire Sunfire the Golden was renowned for his magnificent golden scales, making him one of the most beautiful dragons of his time. Ridden by King Aegon II Targaryen, Sunfire played a central role in the Dance of the Dragons. Despite his beauty, Sunfire's life during the Civil War was marked by battles and injuries. He was grievously wounded multiple times, notably in battles against Melees, the Red Queen, and later with Moon Dancer. Sunfire was also the visual symbol of Aegon's right to rule the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros. He was a dragon that was young but grew at a very fast pace in the TV series, being around the same size as Cyrax, even though being decades younger. Number 5. Dreamfire So Dreamfire was an older, experienced dragon ridden by Princess Helena Targaryen. With her sky blue scales and shy attitude, Dreamfire was seen as a dragon of enigmatic grace and hidden power. During the Dance of the Dragons, Dreamfire's fate became entwined with the tragic events surrounding the royal family. She was trapped in the dragon pit during the uprising and perished alongside other dragons. She was born around the year 32 AC and so by the time of the events of the Targaryen Civil War, she would nearly be a century old, huge in size and very experienced. Number 6. Silverwing So according to legend, Silverwing hatched from an egg placed in the cradle of Alicent Targaryen by her sister Rhaena in 36 AC, making her just 4 years younger than Dreamfire. Known for her gentle nature and silver scales, Silverwing's long life saw her involved in many key events in Targaryen history. During the Civil War, she was ridden by Ulf the White, a dragon seed who proved his worth as a dragon rider in Dragonstone. Along with Vermithor, Sheepstealer, Vermax and Sea Smoke, Silverwing would descend upon the 90 warships in the Battle of the Gullet as part of the Black Faction. But later on, both the dragon and her rider will turn coat and side with the Greens after the battle at Tumbleton. Number 7. Vermithor So Vermithor the Bronze Fury was one of the largest and most powerful dragons of his time, being just smaller than Vagar. Ridden initially by King Jaehaerys I Targaryen, Vermithor's immense size and strength made him a formidable force during the dance. In the Civil War, he was ridden by Hugh Hammer. 
one of the dragon states who claimed a dragon during the conflict. Vermithor's participation in the war saw him engage in some of the most brutal and decisive battles, firstly as part of Rhaenyra's faction, and then later alongside Silverwing and her rider, changing sides to support Aegon II and the Greens. And number 8, Vagar. So Vagar was the oldest and the largest dragon in Westeros during the Dance of the Dragons, having been born during the time of Aegon the Conqueror, ridden by Queen Visenya Targaryen and later by Prince Aemon Targaryen during the Dance of the Dragons, she was involved in several key battles, critical ones throughout the Civil War, where her size and strength often turned the tide of the conflict. She is the main reason why the Blacks, with their numerical superiority in dragon numbers, never even dared to go on a full frontal attack to capture King's Landing, while she was still alive. She was the largest dragon stated to be 150 meters long by the show producers and then assessed by fans and us as well to be only around 80 meters long judging by what was seen in the show. But then again, her wingspan could be 150 meters wide. So now we come to the unclaimed wild dragons, starting with Greg Host. Greg Host was a wild dragon residing on Dragonstone during the Dance of the Dragons. He is known for his pale grey-white scales that resembled the morning mist. His elusive nature and ability to disappear into clouds and mist earned him his name as he was notably shy and avoided human contact for extended periods. Unlike other dragons, Greg Host preferred feeding on fish, often seen skimming the narrow sea for prey. He made his lair in the smoking vent high on the eastern side of the Dragon Mond and remained unclaimed and unridden. During the Civil War, Prince Jacarus Velaryon sought new dragon riders among the dragon seas to bolster the Black's forces, but attempts to find and ride Greghos were futile due to his reclusive habits. In 138 AC, Greghos met his end when the crew of the Nisaria witnessed him battling another dragon above the Dragon Mount. Contrary to initial assumptions by Sir Robert Quince that a cannibal was responsible, Greghos was actually slain and partially devoured by Sunfire. And then lastly we have the cannibal. The cannibal was black as coal, with menacing green eyes and of very large size. He was the largest and the oldest of the three completely wild dragons dwelling on Dragonstone, the other two being Sheep Stealer and Greg Host. The small folk on the island called him the cannibal because he was seen to practice cannibalism, feasting on dead dragons, newborn dragons and even dragon eggs. Now the cannibal is said to have been the eldest and largest of the wild dragons which makes him around a century old at the very least. But the common folk of Dragonstone have tales about this dragon going back to even before the arrival of Aegon the Conqueror in 114 BC. So the cannibal might have been from a totally different ancestral line of dragons that settled on Dragonstone to escape the doom, which would explain why he cannibalized on the other smaller Targaryen dragons and that no one had ever ridden him, which might have meant that this dragon was never part of any blood pact between the Targaryens and their selected lineage of dragons originating from Valyria. So those are the 8 dragons of the green faction in House of the Dragon and the Dance of the Dragons. And also the 2 unclaimed wild dragons, Sheep Stealer and the Cannibal. So if you like this video then watch this other one as well and do check out our channel for other dragon content. Also other monster content, we might have things you haven't seen before. Like, subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Take care guys.